Okay, this is Miss Davis, and we're going to do uh, solving equation, two step equations. This is review. You should have learned this last year in Algebra 1. So here is an equation. We got 7w plus 2 equals 3w plus 94. So we're solving for w. If you remember, we're going to get the variables, which is our letter, on one side and our numbers on the other side. And to so do that, um, you know, some people draw the line here to help you, and if you if you want to do that, that's fine. Um, just remember we can add and subtract to keep it equal on each side. So I want to get my 7w and my 3w to the same side so I can subtract this 3w from over here. And that makes it go to zero. I have to do the same side thing over here because of this equal. To keep it equal, we're going to subtract over here. So 7 minus 3 is 4. Don't forget that is 4w. Okay, I also have a number and it's so I want to get this two to the other side so I want to subtract that two from both sides so I have 94 minus 2 which is 92 so now I have 4 W I'm just going to write it a little closer is equal to 92 and at this point I'm going to divide by this 4 to get W by itself on both sides and now W is 23. Now you should always check your work. I want to check a few of these uh, to save time. I'm not going to check all of them. But remember when you check your work, I have W equal 23. I want to plug that back in to the original equation up here. So I have 7W plus 2 is equal to 3W plus 94. So I'm plugging that W in uh, right here. So I have 7 times 23. Remember 7w means 7 times w and w is 23. So I have 7 times 23 which is 163. Uh, 61. I'm going to add 2 to that and I get 163 on this side of the equal. And over here uh, 3 times 23 plus 94 So we have 69 plus 94, again, equals 163. And we know that our answer is correct. All right, let's look at another problem. 7y plus 4 is equal to 3 minus 2y. Again, we want to get our variables on one side and our numbers on the other. It doesn't really matter which side you go. But I see this positive 7 here and this negative 2. So I'm going to get my variables over here. So I want this minus 2y. Remember, um, if you need to, you can say plus negative. It's the same thing. You'll get used to just seeing that, hopefully, you have by now as a minus 2y when it's written like that. So to get that to go to 0, I want to actually add 2y. So I'm going to add 2y on both sides. This becomes 9y. I want to get this 4 to the other side, and it is plus 4, so I subtract 4. And here I'm going to end up with a negative 1. Make sure you do your signs. Use your calculator if you have to. Again, we're going to divide by 9 to make that 1y. And then this time my answer is negative 1 over 9. Again, we can check it. This is a little more difficult to check, and you can use your calculators. We're plugging that y back into the original equation. So we have 7 times negative 1 over 9, which is y, plus 4 is equal to 3 minus 2 times negative 1 over 9. Okay, so here I have negative 7 over 9 plus 4 is equal to 3. And this is minus a negative, which is going to make this all positive, 2 over 9. You can use your calculator at this point, uh, even do it in decimals if you need to. Now, to save time, I'm just going to assume that you used your calculator here. We're going to end up with 3.2 is equal to 3.2. So we know our answer is correct. Do a few more examples. Here we're going to use the, ex the distributive properly. You should have learned this way back in seventh grade over before. So I'm going to take this 2 and distribute it to both of these. So 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 4 is 8, and we've got that plus sign. So I get rid of my parentheses first. 
And now I can get variables to one side, numbers to the other. So my variable is over here by itself. I'm going to use subtract the 8 on this side, subtract the 8 on the other. And this actually becomes 0. So if 2x is equal to 0, dividing by 2 is just going to give us 0. So x is equal to 0. Okay, we'll do another example with that distributed property. 6 distributed 2s. So I've got 6n minus 24 is equal to 3n. Now I can bring the variable here and then take my number all the way to the other side if I want to. Um, you can leave the number here and take your variable to the other side. We'll do that just for the sake of argument. I probably would not do that if I was solving this on my own. Um, I could just show you both ways. But if we take the variable to the other side, we're going to subtract the 6n this time. We're just going to leave that 24 there, but pick up the minus because it's like a minus 24, that subtraction sign. So now I have negative 24 is actually equal to a negative 3 in. I'm going to divide through by that negative 3. And this makes this a positive 8. Okay, let's redo number 4 right quick and taking the variable to the other side. So I had 6 in minus 24 is equal to 3n. So if I say 6 and it is bigger, so I'm going to take the 3 over, so I'm going to subtract the 3 over here. Now I have 3n. I want to move the 24 to the other side. There's actually a 0 here if you need it, but I'm going to add 24 to both sides. So this is 0 plus 24, so I'm going to end up with 3n is equal to 24. Then at this point, I don't have the negatives in case they bog you down, we're going to divide by 3 again and get n is equal to positive 8. Okay, let's do just a couple more examples there. Okay, so now we've got negative 27 plus 6y is equal to 3 times y minus 3. Again, I see these parentheses and I need to get rid of those first. So we're going to multiply through by 3. And again, make sure you leave that minus sign there. Okay, I'm going to take this 3y to the other side. So I subtract it. I end up with 3y. I need to move the number to the other side. So I'm going to add, because it was negative, to make it go to 0. So I add 27. Make sure you pick up this minus sign. It's actually 27 minus 9, which is going to be 18. Now I'm dividing by 3 on both sides. And y is equal to 6. Again, if this was a test or quiz, you need to double check. Plug that 6 back in here and here. Making sure you're multiplying, make sure you subtract and then multiply there to check your work. All right, let's do another one. We have 3 times 2x minus 1 minus 2 times 3x plus 4 is equal to 11x. Again, I see these parentheses. My first step is always to get rid of those parentheses. So I'm multiplying through by the 3. 3 times 2x is 6x minus 3. I have this minus here, minus 2 times 3x is a minus 6x. Now I have minus, this is all together here, minus 4 makes that minus 8. Make sure you subtract all of this is equal to 11x. Okay, so I can combine terms on this side. I have a 6x minus 6x, so that actually goes away. I have a negative 3 and a negative 8. Negative 3 minus 8 if you want to, but these are both negative. So 8, 9, 10, 11 gives me a negative 11 is 11x. Dividing 3 by 11 gives me x is equal to negative 1. Remember, it doesn't matter which side your variable is on. If you don't like it written like this, just flip it around. You don't have to change signs when you flip this around because it is x is equal to negative 1 in both of these instances. Okay. Now, if you remember, sometimes when we work a problem, we don't always get a solution. So here we were getting an answer. Every time we got we got x equals something, y equals something, that was one solution. But sometimes we just come in work into a problem. So let's look at this example. Okay, 
Okay, so here we've got variables on both sides, numbers on both sides. So let's do the first step to kind of simplify this. We've got 6x minus 3x gets me a total of 3x plus 5 over here. Over here I've got a 3x. So I've got 11 minus 7, which is going to be 4, and it's a positive 4. Okay? Some of you can look right here and say, okay, this can't be right, because if I have 3x and I add 4 to it, and 3x and I add 5, they can't possibly be equal, because x has got to be the same thing. And that is true. If you don't recognize it at this step, you can go ahead and, you know, get your variables one side, and you get 3x here, and you got 3x here, and uh-oh, my variables just went away. If your variables go away, I mean, definitely 4 is not equal to 5. So when we work this problem, there's not an answer to this problem. It is actually a no solution. So remember, sometimes you do get no solution. Just be careful, double check your work. Make sure you haven't done a mistake. Then if you remember, there was another case. Sometimes we have a solution, sometimes we have no solution. Well, let's look at this example. We got 6x plus 5 minus 2x is equal to 4 plus 4x plus 1. Again, we want to combine terms on each side. So we got this x term here. 6x minus 2x is, is 4x. I have a constant of 5. Over here, I've got a 4x by itself. Then I have 4 plus 1, which is 5. Oop. Well, yeah, 4x plus 5. It is equal to 4x plus 5. Okay, when you get this situation where everything is the same, um, any X I put in there is going to work. It doesn't matter what it is. And these are all real numbers or infinitely many. Uh, if you don't recognize it at this step, you can go ahead and try to get rid of your, your variable to the same side. That's going to go away. And you're going to have 5 is equal to 5, which, yes, 5 is equal to 5. So my X can be anything. Okay, so sometimes the solution is all real numbers. Or you could say infinitely many, infinitely many. Okay, I did not spell that right. But that's supposed to be infinitely many solutions. Okay, so let's try one more example. And see what it turns out to be. We've got 2x plus 3 on parentheses of x minus 4 is equal to two times parentheses 2x minus six plus x. Again, the first step is to get rid of these parentheses. This is a plus, so I don't have to worry about that minus sign. So three times x is three x, three times four is 12, and it does have the minus. I still have a two x in front of this. Over here, two times two x is four x, two times six is 12, but I have that minus and I have plus x. The next step again is to combine terms on each side of your equal. I have 2x plus 3x, which is 5x minus 12. Over here I have 4x and an x, which is 5x minus 12. So again, if you recognize it, you can stop right here. If you don't recognize it, you can get rid of the 5x on both sides and realize that it goes away. And I have exactly the same thing, which is all always true. Of course, this step was always true also. So that gives me an infinitely many, and since I can't spell infinitely many, I'm gonna write down all real numbers. Okay, and this is the equation review.